Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Welcome to the channel where I teach the art of bird photography. It's a new year, and at the beginning of every new year, lots of us make New Year's resolutions. We try to learn new things. We set ourselves off with some challenges. So this week's tutorial is five challenges for 2020 where you can improve your bird photography. Just one thing before we get started though, if you want to learn more about bird photography and take better bird images, hit the subscribe button now and click on that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And the first challenge for 2020 is to take one shot for every 100 you normally take. If you're out doing bird photography and you take 2,000 images in a day on average, take 20. And what this is going to do is it's going to force you to think more about composition, light, sharpness, point of view, exposure, all the things that make a beautiful, compelling image. It will force you to think about those before you take the image. This is a way to get you to be more intentional about creating beautiful images. I'm going to go through a day where I went down to the local park and I took 13 pictures. So here's a song sparrow. Here's a red-winged blackbird that I got a photo of that day. Here's Canada goose. So this was in the springtime, so it's been a while ago, but I took 13 pictures on one trip down to the local pond. Here's just some of the images that I took. You can see through this collection that I was pretty selective about what I was taking pictures of and how close I was getting and getting a good point of view and a nice background and all of those things. And so I thought about taking each picture and slowed down a little bit. And it was a good challenge for me that day. And so hopefully that's something that can increase the art in your bird pictures. Challenge number two is slow down the shutter speed. Now, I've always been telling people to increase their shutter speed because it fixes all kinds of problems with bird photography. If you're trying to get a sharp image, a faster shutter speed can help because it freezes the subject, it freezes any vibration that you have, all of those kinds of things. But if we slow down the shutter speed, we get wing blur or wing tip blur or we blur flocks of birds, and then we can start putting some real art in our images. These rhinoceros auklets beat their wings really fast. And so even at 1 320th of a second, it was a pretty fast shutter speed, but it blurs the wings and it makes it a more artistic shot. Now I'm panning with the bird, I'm moving the camera as the bird flies away and the eye is sharp. Here's a tufted puffin at 1 800th of a second, and you can see that the wingtips are still blurred because these seabirds like this are very poor flyers and they have a rapid wing beat. Now, something like this osprey, one eight hundredth of a second, the wing tips are blurred. The rest of the bird is pretty sharp. And that's all trying to capture that sense of motion in with the bird. And then here, one twenty-fifth of a second, you can still tell it's a sandhill crane, but it, it kind of works because it's an ethereal image of the sandhill crane moving by. And then here's a sandhill crane at one six hundredth of a second, and I used a flash, and so I got this rim shade here on the bird and dark under here, the shadows dark under the neck. But it's kind of a cool image, a different kind of a view of a sandhill crane than we normally get. Now, if you're taking pictures of flocks of birds, it's pretty easy to use a wide angle lens on a flock of birds and get all the birds sharp. But one of the things that you can do is slow down the shutter speed in this particular case, I was a little bit closer, but you can slow down the shutter speed so that you can get blurred birds, you get some movement, and it can create a nice image. And then you can really slow down the shutter speed. And one of the ways that I do this when I'm trying to create these blurs where they're super slow shutter speed is I'll shoot in aperture priority mode. And you can see that I'm at F22 at 1 20th of a second. But these snow geese make these nice curved lines and kind of flow through the image. And then here's 1 11th of a second. And so the birds are really taking off. This is a blast off where they're all jumping up into the air and the birds are really streaked. Challenge number three is the three day effect. Scientists have proven that if you spend three days in nature, you are more productive, you're more creative. And so what I would challenge you is to find three or four days, preferably four days, because on the third day, you get more productive and more creative if you spend three days in nature. So take that fourth day and really go crazy with your bird photography, be super creative, get lots of really good images. And then challenge number four for 2020 is 
make a list of your big five birds. So these are the five birds that I really want to photograph this year. Wilson's plover, piping plover, a reddish eager, you know, fishing when they have their wings out and they're shading the surface of the ponds. I want to photograph a wood stork and a roseate spoonbill. So these were the five birds that I want to photograph this year. And so I figured, well, I need to go to Florida. All right, so then where in Florida can I go? And it just so happens that a friend of mine invited me down to Boca Raton for a few days and we're going to go to this uh, wildlife refuge up here and then there's some beach parks along here where we can get some shorebirds. So I'm planning a trip to Florida so I can photograph the big five and some of those are birds that I haven't photographed before. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then challenge number five is use a shorter telephoto lens. Here's a photograph of a mallard. I had a 20 millimeter lens on the camera. I was in a parking lot and they thought I was going to feed them. So I put the 20 millimeter lens on and I was taking pictures of the whole flock. And then this guy comes up and starts pecking at the lens. Here I'm photographing a ring-billed gull at 90 millimeters. And that's a little bit short for most bird photography, but it can really work. If you're someplace like Bosque del Apache, you can photograph at 17 millimeters, flocks of snow geese coming in over the ponds in the mornings. But also at 17 millimeters, once I photograph these glaucous wing gulls out at ocean shores, and I'm feeding them bread, which is not the best thing in the world to do, but they came in pretty close. So I was able to get some interesting and different shots by shooting at a wide angle. So vary the focal length of your lens. I hope you've enjoyed these five challenges for 2020 and I hope you can get out there and create beautiful bird images in 2020. If you wanna learn more about bird photography, consider picking up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, the complete field guide for beginning and intermediate photographers and birders. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. To learn even more about bird photography, check out my workshops on timboyerphotography.com. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.